Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Erickson TV. Curtis here with Lauren. Hey, Lauren. Hey, everybody. Yeah. Hey, Lauren, um, I, was, I, was, I always uh, look to see what the, the publications are printing, you know, for uh, the money magazines and the, you know, the uh, Yahoo okay. finance. Yeah. And, uh, this is from Kiffliger Magazine. They actually had a pretty good article about five steps to secure retirement. Okay. And, the, and the thing that, the thing, I actually get this question a lot from, like, in fact, I had two tax clients in my office today, and they're talking about maybe meeting later this year to, t to look at, you know, projecting for their retirement to see if they're going right. to have enough. And I think you had a meeting today kind of like that, right. too. Yes, exactly. So ver a very common question. Right. Um, and so the interesting thing was is, uh, you know, there's some very obvious steps. You know, we've, we've had a very difficult decade of, of uh, investment market returns right. and had a lot of volatility, especially since uh, 2008. Right. And um, a, lot of, a lot of people I, th I definitely have been scared out of the market. You can tell by the outflows from uh, equity mutual funds right. yeah, uh, that's and true. fixed income. But the interesting thing was is that as some strategies that people were looking at to have a secure retirement, some real obvious ones such as uh, working longer. That's always a good one. Uh, or going back to work after you've yeah. retired. In fact, in fact, it was interesting. There's uh, an all-time record high of people over the age 55 that are in the workforce right now, which was interesting. Um, hmm. The other thing that was interesting is, uh, uh, you know, and this is a really good strategy. Is even though there's a lot of uh, despair that the Social Security is not healthy, you know, the, the fund and everything. Right. Um, if you wait longer to take your Social Security benefits. You get a you get a, an increased payout. Uh, That's so, exactly correct. Right, and unfortunately, uh, the pro proportion, the high percentage of people take it at early at 62, and they give up you know 25 percent of, of their benefit uh, uh, by not waiting until their full retirement age. Uh, yeah, the guy the guy who came in today to meet with me, one of my few victories on the subject of Social Security, I actually had convinced him to wait until 70 ah, to take Social Security because he gets a, like an eight percent raise per year. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, it's it's um, uh, you. For each month before full retirement age that you take Social Security, you lose five ninths of one percent. Okay. So that's per month. So uh, it, you, when you take it early, you lose uh, almost uh, seven percent per year. And then if you and if you wait per, per year, to, uh, you you Sorry, only seven. make four ninths of a percent per month. But still, uh, you make I think about four or five percent more per year if you wait. At every year that you wait. So, you know, if you wait three or four years or something, that starts to add up pretty quickly. And the difference between taking it early and taking it at the latest time you possibly could is a huge difference. I can't do the math in my head right at the moment. Right. But it's, it's a, a big really, number. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's significant. And I think that the one thing that people should think about when it comes to Social Security is that you get paid out every year and you get a cost of living adjustment. Right. Unlike a lot of other things that say they're going to pay you out every year. Right. And you don't get a cost of right. living adjustment. Yeah, like most annuities, for instance, that don't have a cost of living adjustment. Most annuities, most pensions, right. almost all that stuff that pays you out every year, you don't get any cost of living increase. In Social Security, you do, so it's your one good deal there. Right. <laughs> yeah, the other, the other thing that was really fascinating to me is uh, related to, they did a poll and they said they asked they, they asked the person that was contemplating the, you know how to invest their retirement assets. Right. If you had a choice of receiving of picking a financial product that provides a guaranteed four percent rate of return consistently and will not lose value. Right. Versus a eight percent return per year that is subject to market volatility and potential loss of principal, uh, especially in the short run. Okay. Um, it was interesting that 76% of the respondents choose the lower performing 4% guaranteed project. Right. Um, and I, I can understand that from an emotional point of view. <laughs> I mean, you, with your math and financial planning background, is that a wise move? For, for, because that's a lot of, that's a lot of uh, income to be giving up year by year. Right. I, th I think, I hope, I hope that part of the reason people made the choice that they made there is because of the way the question was asked. I mean, if you asked me if I had a choice between two different products, I'm not sure how I would answer all the time. But uh, I think that a part of it is also just that, yeah, people are looking at uh, financing their entire retirement with very low risk stuff that has a very low expected return. And uh, that's going to mean you're going to be cutting your spending. Right, lower, lower, <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> something has to give. Right, yeah, yeah exactly. And I think, and I think to, to end this episode, I think there's, uh, you know, people people want, I guess, this, you know, they, they feel like they've lost control, so they want to maybe grab as much certainty as they can. Right. Um, and the thing is, is that it's it's a very it's a very, you know it's actually a very good thing when you look at historical rates of returns of, of fixed products versus you know equities. 
Uh, there's, there's, there's definitely volatility in the equities, but much greater returns long term. Right. So, so do you have any uh, kind of quick wisdom thoughts about how to maybe reduce that, that uncomfortableness of volatility? Uh, you know, assuming that people will likely need greater returns than the That's fixed right. products that are available. Yeah. In retirement, it's, it becomes even more important to diversify, and you start diversifying by combining risky assets with low risk assets, okay. which means stocks and bonds. Right. And the, and the type of low-risk assets of bonds would be like short-term yes. fixed income type yes. of, of short-term guarantees. Short-term bonds, right. yes. Okay, yeah, and if you do that, you will have, you still will have, that will not, uh, that will not uh, get rid of volatility, no, but it will neutralize it. Yes, right. and, it'll make, and you can come up with something that will be something that you can handle. Your choice in retirement is not between something extremely risky with a high rate of return and something with no risk and no rate of return. Right. And then I think the other final benefit to close this episode out is that people that have that type of portfolio versus the fixed product where they're getting the monthly check, right? The, you know, once you've made that decision to go into the fixed check with you know fixed product with the monthly check, that's it. You're, you've made a right. choice for the rest of your life. <laughs> the benefit that's of correct. being in a uh, in a portfolio that is liquid has liquidity is that you can take out extra income if needed for emergencies right. or things like that. So that's another benefit to end, end, end the. Uh, to having your retirement. So thank you very much for watching this episode of Ericsson TV and we'll see you next time. Bye see you now. next time.